liquid water has made oceans, but there is no life. Four billion years later, something has changed. Earth is covered in life. All life is made of cells, tiny sacks of water containing hundreds of different organic compounds which are constantly interacting. What are the chemicals of life? And how could they have arisen on a stark and barren planet all that time ago? We don't know for sure. This is an experiment that was first performed in the 1950s in an attempt to answer that very question. What we have in this flask is the ocean, if you like, and we're heating it with this Bunsen burner to simulate the effects of the sun. So what happens, as this water heats and is evaporated, it travels all the way up here and continues into the Earth's atmosphere. Now in this bulb just here, what we have is the gases that we think made up the Earth's atmosphere four billion years ago. We have the gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen, ammonia and methane. And the effects of this wondrous spark pretty much simulates the effects of lightning in a stormy atmosphere. So as we've got to hear from the atmosphere, the water condenses and travels down, simulating rain, all the way down to here. Whereas what happens is, the rain comes down and flows back across into the ocean again. So if you like, what this simulates is the water cycle, starting from the ocean into the atmosphere, condensing from rain and back into the ocean again. The amazing thing is that if you leave this for a week or so, the water actually turns a brown colour. If you take a sample and analyse what's within it, you discover that it contains things such as simple sugars, some amino acids, some lipids, and the basic building blocks that make up both DNA and RNA. Of course, this is a long way from, uh, from the big molecules that make up life, but it's a starting point, and it gives us, it gives us an idea of well, how life might have begun. In those ancient seas, the supply of the molecules of life, biomolecules, must have slowly increased, although just how they assembled into life remains a mystery. All are based on the carbon atom, the most versatile element of all. They fall into four main groups, nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates somehow became the stuff of life. Of course, none of this would have worked were it not for water. Water is the world in which biomolecules drift and connect. Life chemistry is aqueous chemistry, chemistry that works because of the incredible dissolving power of water. The earliest cells may have looked similar to bacteria like these. Bacteria are termed prokaryotes from Greek words meaning before the nucleus. Prokaryotes have no nucleus, which only appears in more complex forms of life. They are very small. Yet small and simple as they may be, prokaryotes remain the most widespread and diverse kingdom of life. And for over two billion years, they had the planet to themselves. This fossil is three and a half billion years old. It's called a stromatolite, and it was formed by the activity of cyanobacteria. The cyanobacteria build up layers of rock. Now you can imagine the surprise of a scientist about 50 years ago when in Shark Bay in Western Australia, he discovered that stromatolites were still existing. And in a few places around the world, including here at Lake Clifton, these stromatolites are still being formed by the activity of cyanobacteria. What the cyanobacteria do is they use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. And it's thought that cyanobacteria producing stromatolites for billions of years played an important role in contributing the oxygen to the atmosphere. If you take some of these cyanobacteria from this lake and look at them under a microscope, you can see the green chlorophyll. So it's clear that cyanobacteria have played a very important role in the evolution of life. But even a bacterium at a thousandth of a millimetre in size is itself a thousand times bigger than the molecules of life. To enter the realm of molecules requires an electron microscope. An electron microscope can just make out the molecules of life, seen here colourless and frozen, the price of achieving up to a million times magnification. The long strand is DNA, 
out of which strands of RNA are being formed. It clearly shows how building blocks of small molecules, called monomers, are strung together into supermolecules, called polymers. The first biomolecule was probably something like this, a self-assembling polymer. In the constant activity of the atomic world, it had to be capable of grabbing other atoms and growing. It's only in the last century that we've found that the substances by far the most adept at this game of building and copying themselves are at the heart of life. Nucleic acids. Deoxyribonucleic acid is DNA. This is the famous double helix, a seemingly endless molecule made up of just four monomers. Each monomer, called a nucleotide, is a sugar and a phosphate group attached to a nitrogen-containing base. The sugar is deoxyribose, hence the first part of the whole name. In the assembled molecule, the sugars and phosphates bond lengthwise and form a double spiral backbone. Their bases project sideways from the spirals and connect them like rungs on a ladder. The bases are thymine, adenine, guanine and cytosine, or T, A, G and C for short. T attracts and pairs only with A. G attracts and pairs only with C. This specific pairing means that if DNA is split open, freely available DNA building blocks will only attach to the correct base partners. The old strand acts as a template on which to form a new backbone, thus making a new spiral. And the same thing happens on the other strand. This is how DNA is reproduced. But is reproduction enough? No. Life requires other chemistry. For example, DNA needs a supply of molecular building blocks, and it needs protection. The next most important step is for the DNA to have a protective container. And this is where cells come in. Their walls are constructed by another family of biomolecules, lipids. Lipids is the general term for animal fats, waxes, oils and so on. You know, the greasy stuff. They're greasy because they don't dissolve in water. We call that hydrophobic. Have a look at this. This is a chemical that has an oily end at one end of its molecule and a charged soluble end at the other. So it will partly dissolve in water but the oily ends stick together in little groups. It can carry grease into water. So we can use it for washing up. Yes, it's detergent. But look what it also does. It forms films, membranes. One of the most important jobs done by lipids in biology is the formation of cell membranes. Detergents and soaps like these are man-made, but their molecules are similar to lipids. In nature, phospholipids make membranes. And membranes make cells. Here is a pure phospholipid mixed with water. Already tiny cell-like spheres are forming. So how does this happen? Most lipid molecules have long hydrocarbon tails. Phospholipids have two tails attached, connected to a glycerol, a phosphate group and an alcohol. This end is attracted to water. It is hydrophilic, while the hydrocarbon tails are hydrophobic. The result is that in water, the tails stay together while the heads connect with the water either side. A double-layered self-sealing membrane is formed. Phospholipids make up the crucial barriers which enclose the chemicals of life. While lipids have other roles too, such as energy storage and fatty insulation, it was probably this job of forming cell membranes which allowed the chemistry of life to shift gear. Free drifting molecules could now be protected and concentrated to react faster and presumably to evolve faster. Proto-life could become closer to life like this, as we know it, active. 
cells are not passive. Many get their biomolecules by pursuing and ingesting them as scavengers eating dead material or as predators eating other live cells. Yet others use the energy in light to make their own biomolecules from carbon dioxide and water. All are engaged in complex, coordinated chemical activity. So how does DNA fit into this chemistry, given that it needs to keep itself safe? Well, the answer to that is that there's a chemical middleman. It's a class of biomolecules whose main job is to take instructions from the DNA and then go out and get the action started. These substances catalyze, or if you like, kickstart all sorts of reactions in cells. They're called enzymes. And even the most simple reactions in cells are catalyzed by enzymes. The reaction between carbon dioxide and water, for example, to produce carbonic acid is simple, and it will occur without an enzyme, but only slowly. And because it involves a pH change, we can actually see the reaction happening in the test tube. Look what happens when I bubble carbon dioxide into this tube here, which contains water and a pH indicator. As the reaction proceeds, the indicator will gradually change colour from blue to yellow. But as you can see, without an enzyme, it's pretty slow. In our cells, though, we need this reaction to occur quickly. So it's catalyzed by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. And that enzyme allows the reaction to occur up to 10 million times faster. So what kind of stuff are enzymes? Almost all are proteins. Here we have another very complex class of biomolecules. Proteins are built up from 20 basic monomers called amino acids. They twist and coil into complex shapes. Proteins make up the overwhelming majority of enzymes, chemical switches by which all the rest of the activity in the cell is controlled. But it is typical of nature to use its biomolecules in the most diverse ways. Proteins are not only enzymes, they also have structural roles, making scales, skin, tendons, muscle and cartilage, to name a few. The fourth family of biomolecules in the ancient oceans was carbohydrates. The building blocks of carbohydrates are mostly ring-shaped molecules, commonly called sugars, of which the most important is glucose. Glucose is the molecule of choice for cellular fuel. Being a fuel, glucose, as you might expect, also forms energy stores, such as glycogen in animals and as starch in plants. Plants also use it in the form of cellulose as a strong and rigid skeleton. In fact, cellulose, from trees on land to plankton floating in the ocean, is the most abundant biomolecule on Earth. Four families of biomolecules, nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. These chemicals are the most important ingredients of life. They are its building blocks, and they're often torn apart and recycled into new arrangements. In another sense, they also evolved from the shape of bacteria into a more sophisticated cell, a cell which would open a new era for life on Earth.